Started off with a dream that was way big. Bought some rollies for the team, could have bought a rich. Welcome back to another episode with Betty ATV. We got a special guest here for you guys, you know, the youth, the man, and, you know, the myth. <laughs> I receive it well. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. I just wanted to ask you, what is Lamar to you? Lamar to me is a brand I constructed and collaborated with other artists that I call my team now mm -hmm. and a representation of what I call Love is Ray. Mm -hmm. A documentation with feelings, emotions, experiences, and overall just compassion on garments on in picture form and just visual visual arts i want to say right. me being able to construct we being able to construct as far as me and my team being able to really point out and pinpoint what an experience might look like on art piece i don't like to like call these pieces i like to call them art Mm -hmm. Because it took real time and real energy to construct, not because of me, but because of we and the team that I go through mm -hmm. all of this with. To me, Lamore Frere is an art project that I get to do with people who love art and feel my vision and feel the vision as much as I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm just blessed to be able to have people that God blessed me to work with. That's, that's hella dope. Like, because I didn't, when I saw first saw it, I was like, wow, this is pretty unique, you know? But I didn't know too much about it, and now really talking to you about it opens up like the actual art and seeing it at a different perspective now, you know, definitely, which is nice. Um, also, you've done a lot of shows out here, it's a lot of fashion shows, you know, and you actually did one at my high school. I don't even know if you know I went to Taylorsville. Went to Taylorsville? Yeah, you've done one over there, yes. which is crazy, and I just want to know how that came upon, you know, how did you end up in that situation? <laughs> That's a funny story. So I, I graduated in 2020 from Granger High School. Originally, I was supposed to do it at Granger High School, but they had like something going on that specific day, so I couldn't really do it that day. So they told me, hey, so if you're doing it in the auditorium at Granger, we're gonna have you do it at Taylor's High. That's lit. So I'm like, I wasn't really like too fond with the idea of that because I graduated from Granger. I wanted to give, you know, give Granger that, you know, you know that feeling, but it was kind of, it was a blessing and an opportunity regardless. I was given that chance. So I just went to Taylorsville and talked to their BSU advisors and understood how we can do this because this was for Black History Month. Mm. It was a Lamar Frere Black History Month fashion show. Like all the models were, most, most majority of the models were Taylor's Ohio and Granger students. Yeah. So it was just something to incorporate Black Student Union and fashion and art into one place and one caliber. So I was blessed to be given that opportunity to really showcase or give back to the schools that I learned my artistic values from. Mm -hmm. Being at Granger, I had a teacher named Ms. Warren. I used to hate art because they used to make you like formulate to the way that they see art in their eyes you know what I mean so me being able to have a teacher that was just so free form and so reluctant with her art it helped me understand art to a whole complete base I've been doing art since I've been 12 so it's like I really understood that within my art teacher Miss Warren for sure she showed me all the ins and outs of how to really be a free artist you can be an artist but it's different from being a free one, because being a free artist, you don't really have a cap on you. Yeah, you, you're, it's, it's infinite. It's just endless. Yeah. A lot of people have caps to them. I just try to be an individual to where my imagination is just my literal vision board. Like literally, I want to be able to like right. take a picture, like a snapshot of my imagination and put it into a garment or put it into a tangible artistic form. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And that's just the goal regardless. And I, I appreciate Granger and Taylorsville and Granite School District wow. for giving me that opportunity because mm -hmm. now we have it annually. Now we're going back oh, two years. That's so next Black History Month that's in February, cool. we have another event that's tied to a multicultural Black History Month. Yeah, yeah, definitely so, pop out to that, y'all. Don't oh, miss God. out. Don't miss out, I'm telling y'all. So <laughs> this is big things, man. Y'all see it, y'all see hard. it. No cap, don't miss it, honestly. Hell yeah, but um, what what like inspired you to get into art? You know, like what are some things or some people that inspired you? 
I used to like make music. Like I used to really, really like music. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of just one medium I felt like I could express myself in. And so I figured out there's so many different mediums and so many different canvases that I could put my imagination into. And it went from me wanting to make music to me understanding that there's different ways that I could express art visually. Mm-hmm. Like right. certain shirts that I make like reflects my moods that I'm in when I make those pieces. Like it gets to a factorization, like everything That's is so sick. specified and, and deep. Like music is beautiful, but I feel like artistically in this medium that I'm in right now, art is the best way I could exp- it's not art, excuse me, fashion is the best way, through garments is the best way I could express mm-hmm. my art form through because everything is really 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 detailed and calculated like to the colors to certain feelings and certain ideologies that I put on to the shirts like even with the like this piece right here right like I don't know if you guys noticed but like this is supposed to resemble real tears I don't really what? like to ever explain my pieces ever but yeah. show that to everybody show everybody <laughs> yeah let them see And that's something you drop already, or? I haven't dropped any of these. These are all one oh, ones right now, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. sick. I realized, I understood that every, every piece that I make is like a song to me. Mm-hmm. So I try to take my time and my efforts with every single piece because I feel like I have to go through real experiences and I have to go through real life to understand how to make a piece that's able to correlate with not only my community, but somebody who might be in Afghanistan who just might cross my page and right. feel like how am I stronger than a stronghold mm-hmm. I feel like I try to make pieces that's bigger than me mm-hmm. right. because anybody could make anything but I try to make things that you kind of have to think about I kind of have to think about I have to go through things yeah. to actually be able that's to like sick. represent myself through clothing so I, I think of it a little bit deeper in as far as like the same way you listen to a little baby song, you might feel a certain feeling. I want to mm-hmm. project that feeling through my clothing or mm-hmm. through my art, period. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And you, man, you, this is some crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? I like, try. You, like, to be honest, I recognize that one. That one's definitely one that I can relate to. That's the World Cup one, the soccer one, right? Because you're, you know, a football yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I recognize that out, you know what I'm saying? I, off the bat, you, you were promoting that. That's a nice piece, a nice piece of artwork, you know, Thank that you. you're doing. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and then this tier one, I didn't, I didn't really, now that I look at it, I see it, you know what I'm saying? Now I see it, you know what I'm saying? Today I cried in my mother's yeah. arms. Yeah. That's what this piece is called. Mm. When I officially drop it, mm. today I cried in my mother's arms. Yeah, that's yeah, see, That's crazy stuff. Bro. That's, that's <laughs> like the title of a poem, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> so that's dope that you actually taking the time to put that like hard work into it. Yeah. Like someone would structure a song or make, you know, a piece of something, you know what I'm saying? You're actually taking that hard work and implementing it into, you know, clothes, and that's crazy. And you, can you talk a little bit about this World Cup one? Like, yeah, what's the- I, that shirt is crazy because I had a whole different I, idea about making this shirt. I got these shirts from John Stan. John Stan had a collaboration with ASOS. Mm-hmm. He didn't end up using those specific shirts, so I got the opportunity to get them from him. But originally, they said a more yourself, which was what I wore at the fashion show. I changed like six times. That was just one of the pieces that I had. And it says a more yourself, which means love yourself. But then I realized I was about to drop it. And then I realized I think that I want to go World Cup style. So I changed the whole thing last second. And I realized like, yo, let's do it. So I made this at 10 a.m. one day and I dropped it at four <laughs> dropped it the same day i had my manufacturing just work ot on it that whole day they put certain things on pause mm-hmm. thank god for them they put certain things on pause to you know quality control and make sure certain right. things are right and stuff like that and we got the opportunity to drop these and what these kind of they don't really have the biggest biggest meaning with this one is just i grew up playing soccer i played soccer before i played anything for else. Sure, yeah it, it only made sense I made something for World Cup. So even yep. if you wouldn't think there's any correlation, well, there is. Only way. I used right. to play for UDA, so. Really? Ah, that's dope. That's, <laughs> that's club, yeah. man. Shout out to UDA, man. Shout out to UDA. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, those cool times, but that's just one of those pieces that just kind of bring back my childhood and. Yeah, these the are. In a sense, within it, when we're chilling. 
But our kids, that's when we're the most free. The kids, kids ask the most questions. If you realize it, yeah, yeah adults kind of just yeah, they, they know really, it all. They, really, they, <laughs> they know really it all, much, man. Cause they're not curious enough they're anymore. Not curious. Yeah. Not yeah. Enough. Yeah. I feel like you know what I'm as kids, being a kid is the only way to really, really be creative. Mm-hmm. Really have that imaginative oh, sense. The youth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no really, no cap. Real. The youth speaking the truth, no cap. But um, so I just want to go more on to you know that show you did in University of Utah because you know you're really popping your shit. You're really doing what you got to do for the city. You know, showing love, obviously the, from the brand, brand name. You know, I just want you to go more into of actually how that came upon. Yeah, shout out Create, shout out Zach, shout out yes, Wes, sir. shout out Pam for really putting that together. Like I'm not even, I wasn't even the one. Who, constructed i'm just a part of what they had going on so okay i see they took so much time and so much energy to plan and make sure that event was to the liking Mm -hmm. that everybody wanted to be a part of and i feel like it was beautiful to be a part of such a beautiful experience i think the biggest takeaway of it was i dropped out from 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 college college. or high school college so it was kind of like a, a big feeling for me to be able to have a fashion show at an institution that I, I don't go to anymore, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a blessing because it shows me that I, I can be in institutions without me being a student. Mm-hmm. I could be in a college without me having like traditional classes. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was like a wake up call for me. Like maybe I could actually like really, 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 really like do this. You know yep. what I mean? Like, yep. Yep. and it was kind of like that solidification. Like, hey, like maybe this might be for you. Right. And I kind of just went on and gathered the best models that I could at that specific mm-hmm. moment in time. And I just walked. I, I tried to spread a message through just my walk and my actual runway mm-hmm. in a way where it was rememberable. I don't know if you guys attended. No, I saw an IG. I didn't attend I it. tried to I create it. an experience, at least with my runway. Mm-hmm. Well, all the brands there were absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. And I was blessed to be a part of all the brands that were there, Hannah, Ruth, all of these individuals that, you mm-hmm. know, I met through this particular event. And I think it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. I had a chance it. to be a part of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was, it was a fashion show at the U? Yeah. 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 It, was, it, was, it was like one you set up? Like no. you guys did it? Or? I was a part of the people who set it up. Oh, the main okay, people okay. who set it up was Create, Wes, and Zach. Most right. majority of the people that came in and like made sure everything was right. Oh, okay, that's and dope. Hell yeah. People that we could accredit to that show even being a thing. Right. You know what I mean? For, For real. Sure. Even happening, right? Even happening. Yeah. Those are three. Right. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. dope. And then I also noticed the way you like, you know, carry yourself on social media, you know, not just as a person, but like even on the way you, you know, market your stuff on IG, you know. What are some market strategies that you have that, or you do for your clothing brand? It's gonna sound so cliche, but I'd be myself. Yeah. You see like other brands have their own marketing strategies Mm -hmm. and the only thing that I could do to like differentiate myself is to be myself in Mm -hmm. whatever room I hop into, Mm -hmm. whatever circumstance I go into, I'm gonna leave the exact same. So even within marketing, I don't know. I I just kind of post a little bit more just me. Yeah. Like I just post me. Mm-hmm. I don't really have like a tactic or like a marketing strategy. Or mm-hmm. Nothing. I just sit around. I'm like, yo, what can I do to make sure that this piece gets the attention it might need? Yeah. Because it's so hard to just put things out on just one surface mm-hmm. platform. How can I outreach in so many different ways? Yeah. So I just think outside the box as much as I can. I think all day. Like I wake up, the first thing I do is think. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm to a point where I, I feel like I have like a million thoughts a day. Hmm. It's like one of those thoughts have to be about my brand or yeah, how to definitely. push this out into mm-hmm. a way where I've never done it before. Mm-hmm. I think so much. I think, matter of fact, thinking is like my full time job. Right. You know what I mean? So I literally wake up. And yeah. Think like Phineas and Ferb. Like, I feel like my life is like Phineas and Ferb. He's a creator. Right? Yeah. yeah. Phineas wakes up every single day. He's like Ferb. What we about to do today? Oh God, what's the plan? <laughs> and they get it done. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what are we about to do today? What am I going to oh create to right. help not only me, but people around me? You know what I mean? Yeah. The people that I love, bigger that than love you. me. Yeah, it's bigger it's, than you. It's bigger than me at this point. I don't even look at it as like a me project. I tell my team all day, 
it's a we project. Mm -hmm. It's not a me project anymore. Right. Facts. I've done what I've had to do, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm at a space where Lamar Frere is an art collaborative. Like, it's a collective art collaboration, excuse mm -hmm. me. I want it to be a, a space where art just lives, not just because I'm here, because mm -hmm. so-and-so is here. I just want art to exist and be fluid through the whole brand and whatever counterparts and people that I'm blessed to work with. You know what I mean? Right, but right. That's yeah, the definitely. only way I really look at it. You can't really look at like the other side of things and mm -hmm. like marketing and numbers. I try not to because I don't try to look and think about numbers too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I try to just create as much as I can because as soon as you... As soon as I started thinking about numbers, that's finance department. It's like mm -hmm. a whole different thing I don't have to worry about. The only thing I got to worry about is the creative department and just being able to create fluidity. And mm -hmm. I just try that as much as I can mm -hmm. for the most part. I like that. I like that. Because I asked that because, you know, I seen that picture of Post Malone. And then there's a guy in the back of the, you know, picture that's wearing one of your hats, you know. Tyler then, Yowie. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yep. Cool guy. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why I asked. And then I also saw like another picture of you. Um, well, I don't think it was actually. It might have been on Snapchat. I think you were at a concert or a festival, and then one of them they were wearing that purple one. That straight. I think, yeah. yeah. Why so straight? Shout out yes. straight. Yes. Yep. Free Why so? Yep. Okay. <laughs> that's you know dope. Saying? And yeah, it's just crazy. I just I seen it pop up out of out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I really wonder how he got out there. You know what I'm saying? He, Cause you know, like I said, we personally know you and whatnot. And then when we see stuff like that, we're like, okay, my boy is really out here doing things, you know. Yes. Cause he's he's really in those rooms that you know, what I'm saying Real a lot of people can't get into, type of shit. You know what I'm saying? God yeah. put me in those rooms. I don't yeah, feel like God. even I put my. There's no way in my own liberty and diligence that I'm in these rooms because it is me. It's God who puts me into these spaces. Mm -hmm. I don't personally believe I got anywhere to anything to do anything without. God literally picked me up and putting me in these specific rooms or places. I might work, but at the end of the day, like my full-time job is serving and being a, a good person and a real person before that. So I yeah. feel like even with that strict interaction, like strict and me actually had a conversation. I hit strict up on Instagram. I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, like I'm a stylist out here. Like I would love to be able to style you. Yep, you're getting out of your comfort zone right there. I don't have pride. I don't have ego. Yeah, yeah. People with I, people with pride and ego don't win. No, no, they don't, they don't. grow either. So, yeah. stepped out my my comfort zone. I'm like, yo, I'm a stylist out here. I know you guys probably like, what is it in Utah? Like, mm -hmm. where do I what do I do in Utah? I'm like, yo, right. got you. Yeah. So I hit him up. I'm like, if you need a stylist, like I'm here. And he's like, bro, bring as much clothes as you can. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? That's dope. I'm like, I'm here. So I had the opportunity. I don't know if they're gonna let me in, but I snuck in a hive. <laughs> I was on a mission. Bro, was on a mission. I was on a mission. I didn't even know how I was gonna get in. I'm mm. not gonna lie to you. I didn't pay for not one ticket. Yeah. Mm. I was like, bro, I gotta get in some way, somehow. And they're mm. like, yo, I had a big old carbon box on me. <laughs> I ran in, I'm like, yo, I got a, I got an artist I'm styling. They're like, let him in, let him in, let him in. I'm like, what? So mm. I just keep going. Mm. I'm trying to find the green room. I'm talking to all the security. I'm like, yo, where's Strick at? Woo wop. Because obviously I, I'm not in communication with him because he's the first set up. Mm. Oh, word. So, like, his phone was off. He's in the green room vibing at the time. Mm. Off his phone, off media. He's just there chilling. Mm -hmm. I'm in, in the scene, like, trying to find security. Yo, where the green room's at? And they're like, yo, can you go in? And I was like, can you go get his manager? Yeah. I'm like, what? It's crazy. It's the first time I'm like really having an opportunity to style like a celebrity or an mm. artist, period. It's dope, mm. yeah. So, within that, comes out, grabs me, he's like, yo, what's up? We just chopping it up. He's in there, you know, gas some of the cases. Mm -hmm. And I just have all these one-on-ones. I, I gave him a tie-dye Lamore, 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 Lamore 4X. Mm -hmm. He rocked that. He was super fond of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, he was shopping. He just picked yeah. stuff in the box. And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, he just talked to his manager with the cases. And I was just vibing with him for the day that he was there. That's fine. And just after that, I had the opportunity to, I guess, meet a whole lot of people, a whole lot of cool people. Like, I gave a shirt to Jack Carlo. Mm -hmm. oh, he messed word. with it. I gave pieces to, um, what's, what's bro name? I, for, I forgot his name, but I, I was just in the back like, mm -hmm. yo. What y'all want? I was in the green room, just yeah. everybody's just in there grabbing stuff. And then that night, that same night, I seen Tyler at Palace 
And mm -hmm. Tyler, he pointed me, he's like, yo, I need, I need one of them pieces, bro. For real? What? <laughs> I see him the next day. I talked to his people and had the opportunity to like style Tyler Yawe the second day. So it was super cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool, and man. That's crazy okay. stuff. Super, super cool. Yeah. It was a blessing how okay. everything really like landed and happened, but. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Should we uh, like be expecting any collaborations with any uh, like brands out here, other clothing brands? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we see a lot more collaborative efforts with um, clothes. I'm collaborating with an artist, Adonis, mm -hmm. on my next collection, Strongholds. Mm -hmm. And he's one of my favorite artists at this current moment. I think, like, God really, really great, like, really breathed on him and showed him, like, mm -hmm. this for you, like, it's your talent. Like, I've seen certain things Adonis has made, and it's made me sit back. I'm like, yo, what? Mm -hmm. That's one of the craziest artists that I've really messed with. I had the opportunity to work with and collaborate with him on this next project that I call Strongholds. Mm -hmm. And what a stronghold is, is it's a space that the devil keeps you in mm -hmm. and you don't really know yourself in. Mm -hmm. It's the, the life that God didn't design for you. That's exactly what a stronghold mm -hmm. is. Okay. And when you're living in a stronghold, you're living in the exact opposite of what God wants you to live in. Oh, God feel like that sometimes. You know what I mean? I feel like that so sometimes. So I'm creating almost not only a clothing collection, but an artistic directed collection about how to break a stronghold, how to break the devil's captivity on our mm. lives and how, what's- Basically you know, how to break through. Break through. Mm -hmm. How can we actually be people of God's use? Mm -hmm. Cause I believe we're all God's iPhone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. God uses like an iPhone <clears throat> for himself. So, Breaking a stronghold has been one of the things I had to really, really, really learn because we're all human. As elevator, whatever we might be in life, mm -hmm. everybody has a stronghold to break. Everybody deals with certain things. Right, of course. Right. Everybody has certain things that they have to deal with at the end of the day. And yeah. it's like, how do we break that? By breaking a stronghold. And mm -hmm. certain people may, may or may not understand what they're dealing with. They're maybe the dis depressive factors they might be seeing, but. Mm -hmm. Underlyingly, they might be going through a stronghold. The stronghold is a phrase that the military uses as a fortress. Mm. Mm. So it's something that you're not even really truly aware of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Certain times you might have to be in a certain space to understand, yo, maybe I'm not operating correctly. Mm -hmm. But little do you know, you're operating with a stronghold. The stronghold is literally captivity on your life and your mind. Mm. Like I'm trying to understand and create a system because this has been one of the longest times it's made, like I've, I've dropped. It's been a really long gap because it's, it's the most deepest thing that I've ever Word. done in my life because mm -hmm. it's not even about me anymore. I'm trying to create a piece or create a dialect that somebody in Australia who's 14 doesn't know what they got to deal oh, with. Or someone who's 28 who got to mm -hmm. deal with certain things. And right. They might not know what they're dealing with. I'm trying yeah. to create what it is and it's just breaking a stronghold and it's yeah. just the current factor of life that I'm in right now. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, that's a dope piece, you know. And you're gonna express that through clothing. It's even more crazy, you know. Through clothing, through art, through poetry, through just through any life, artistic yeah. through life. I like that you say that. Just yeah. through life, through any artistic value that I can. Like it's not even me, it's we. I have so many people I'm blessed to work with now. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like I want us all to be able to speak about our strongholds and how we had to break them or what we're currently going through as a stronghold Thanks. because we're human. Right. Nobody's perfect. They could lie to you all day. Everybody has mistakes. Some people have public mistakes. Right. Some people have mistakes that they do behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're all human. Mm -hmm. Everybody is pink on the inside and we all have things and roots that we all have to cut off. Yep. And a lot of people don't understand that, unfortunately. And I feel like that's the position that I'm in to maybe help people understand that I had to go through strongholds. You had to go through strongholds. Yeah, you had yeah, to go yeah. through strongholds. You had to go Definitely through. Definitely had to go through a stronghold, man. That's how Betty TV came apart. You know what I'm saying? People were, we was, we was struggling, you know what I'm saying? You know, we was really out there doing what we had to do, but we was really in a tight space. Now we're out here doing something for the city, doing something for us, doing something for our families, you know? It's bigger than us, you know, it's way bigger than us. So I totally understand with that piece, mm. you know? Definitely. That is deep. Yep. Like, and that's the type of experiences that I want us as humans to be able to value and connect with because 
if you have conversations with people, so mm. many people are so closed off and playing defense. Mm. How do we grow if we're playing defense all mm -hmm. day? Yep. Right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. How do we win? Defense wins championships, but they don't win life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Facts. You know what so you mean. it's really important that we're all given a safe space. And I feel like I want to create a community that can reside in vulnerability. Vulnerability is the action form of love. That's love and action. When I'm vulnerable Damn. with you, that's me being able to show you love in an action in a tangible form. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So about, yeah. I, I try to create a space, any space that I'm in to be vulnerable so we can actually connect. Right, we can right. sit here and talk about you know accomplishments or whatever the case is. That mm -hmm. doesn't matter. That's all vanity. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I can really take home is you touching and talking to my soul mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Whatever I can give you that you can't go and oh, purchase. God, that's yeah. what you're going to stick with the most. Yeah, at the sense. core, so I try to just leave that in whatever space or environment or clothes or conversation it is. That's just what I try to do, right. regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Hell definitely yeah that's know dope. what you mean, man. Because, <clears throat> you know, like I said, man, Betty TV has always been around, and it's basically about bettering ourselves and our community and the ones around us. It's not just, you know, just me and that trying to better myself, but it's, it's a whole community, you know what I'm saying? It's a whole nation, man, everybody. Everybody got to do better, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got to, better is, you know, you can't even complain about better because, you know what I'm saying, if you woke up yesterday, you were in some other position and today it's a lot better, you're not going to complain, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So there's that, but. And just through connection, we're yeah. able to sit here and have valuable conversations. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that defense is gone. Mm -hmm. Facts. You know what I yeah, mean? Your walls are not up, you know what I'm saying? There's no walls up. You can't grow with walls. Yeah. Right, right. Ever. 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 Yeah, I got it. And that's what I'm trying to create. Just wallless, a wallless community where you can sit here and have a conversation with me and I can sit here and listen. Mm -hmm. And I can sit here and have a conversation with you and you can sit here and listen because I could tell you experiences that you could grow from. You could tell me experiences that I can go from. I don't believe we ever go through things for no reason. I feel like every situation we go through mm -hmm. is to help somebody else when it's their time to experience that same exact thing. We don't go through anything for no reason. And I feel like the people who don't share what they go through are holding a gem that that person might need in that current moment mm. to grow. One time my pastor told me like, you can't isolate because you might be the exact person somebody needs at that current time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I really had to like sit here and understand, like I can't isolate, I can't just sit here and talk about woo woo wop all day. Like I, I really have a mission I really have to connect with people, I, mm -hmm. that's my goal. I gotta connect with people actually, not because I want to, but because there's something to gain from you and there's something to gain from me. Like yeah. we wake up every day, we're students and we're teachers at the same time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. You wake up every single day, you're a student and you're a teacher. You're learning the same time that you're teaching. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's crazy to think about too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. So I really understand that and I take that responsibility of understanding I'm a student and I'm a teacher at the same exact time. Right. Like we all are. Right, right. Every single human, anybody who has a voice box, anybody who has a brain is a teacher and a student at the exact same time. Crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that just That's crazy. dope. Yeah. Man, you heard that from the youth, man. He, he, he don't lie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? And the man himself, Iggy, man, popping up on Betty TV, popping his shit, doing what he got to do. You know what I'm saying? So put, basically putting on the city, you know what I'm saying? And that's what we do here in Betty TV. We come out and, you know what I'm saying, we bring out the best people out here and we show them how they better in themselves, how they improving, you know, the community or whatever they got going on, you know. But much love to the viewers and everything. We're going to call it a night. Um, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, man. One more time, give it up for Lamar, Appreciate man. Appreciate y'all for having me. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir.